Liu Yushi, Spring Song Freshly adorned, down from the vermilion chamber, deep in spring's embrace, she wanders sadly round the courtyard. As she stands among the flowers, counting them, a dragonfly settles on her jade hairpin. So this is the second of Liu Yushi's uh, heptasyllabic quatrains to be included in this anthology and uh, probably the last of his poems also in this anthology in which he is, I don't remember by how many, but he is pretty well represented in, 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 in this collection. As we have said yesterday, he is a relatively important mid-tang poet. But the poem we've read today is pretty different from yesterday. So this spring song poem is very similar to Gu Kuang's In the Palace, which we read three or four days ago. It's very similar to tomorrow's poem, the next one in the series, by Yu Ji's Concubine Song. And it's very similar to the next one after that, Zhang Hu's Given to a Woman in the Palace. All of these are poems in the tradition that we've talked a lot about, the Kung Tishi, the palace style poem. And as we've said before, these poems generally have as protagonists uh, palace women, concubines or imperial wives who for some reason or other have lost the imperial favor and who are sequestered in the imperial harem in some beautiful palatial compound or pavilion surrounded by objects of beauty and luxury herself being depicted as an object of beauty and wearing silks and jewels and makeup and being a young and beautiful woman. So these languishing languid bells, suffering from the absence of imperial favour and suffering also the inevitable passage of time, which will mean that the temporary situation of loneliness is only going to become worse. This, as I said, is a very typical um, genre which we've encountered a lot of times in this book and will encounter again, born in the period of six dynasties, uh, along with a change in poetic sensibilities towards um, the description of things, and in, in, in this case women, palace women, are depicted actually as things, as objects of beauty, and uh, the descriptive mode was very important in the late six dynasties poetry, but also uh, the, the drive towards poetry seen as an end in itself, as poetry for poetry's sake, for the creation of beautiful scenes and uh, harmonious patterns of words, sounds and images, which included the possibility of writing poetry on what a stern Confucian would probably describe as a frivolous topic. Even though, uh, if you really try to make an effort, you can again try to rescue this sort of poetry from its uh, apparently frivolous subject matter and give it some Confucian seriousness by uh, the trick that has been used uh, also for the Chutsu poetry of, of, of the late Warring States uh, period and uh, the Western Han, which is the idea that uh, mm, there is an allegorical reading to the poem, like uh, if this poem is about an abandoned woman, you can really read it as the scholar official obliquely criticizing the emperor or his officials for not paying attention to him and to his virtue, where the physical beauty of the concubine and her surroundings is, is, is equated with the moral purity and virtue and intelligence of the scholar official. Anyway, back to this poem and its, its face value. It's one of those poems, like uh, basically the story is you have this beautiful woman, probably a concubine or, or imperial wife, in the palace. It's spring. She comes out and walks around uh, the courtyard. She probably can't go anywhere else, really. And uh, something happens, a moment of beauty, while she's looking at the flowers, a dragonfly rests on her hairpin. So it's really a snapshot. This poem is really a snapshot of beauty, which is something that fits well into the quatrains because they are very short and they generally cannot develop a topic properly, not even in the way in which uh, a Yushi, a regulated poem, can. So, so they're generally just pictures, one or two pictures of beauty. Mm, and uh, that's exactly what we have here. We don't have much background, we don't have much story. This poem is eminently pictorial. You could see a, an engraving or a picture which essentially contains all the elements of the poem. An instant of beauty with a slight tinge of sadness. Okay, let's take a look at the poem couplet by couplet. First couplet. Freshly adorned, down from the vermilion chamber, deep in spring's embrace, she wanders sadly 
round the courtyard. So at least in the translation we get like these three sub-sentences, they're subordinate sentences, that antecede the main activity, the main scene, which is this woman is wandering sadly around the courtyard. Who is this woman? Where is she coming from? What is she doing? When is she doing it? All the background information which is generally deployed in the first couplet of a quatrain is here. So first of all we get freshly adorned. So even before we know anything there's somebody which is probably going to be a woman and she has just adorned herself. She has finished her toilette. Probably she's wearing her clothes, her most beautiful clothes, makeup, some jewelry, some decoration. She has washed and perfumed herself. So the woman in her prime as an object of beauty, as an entity transmitting beauty and love, this freshly adorned woman, like a freshly adorned flower, is coming down from the vermilion chamber. So with this we get the fact that she's in the imperial palace and that she's probably an imperial concubine or wife. Vermilion is the colour associated with emperors. Vermilion, I think it's an oxide of mercury with a, and it has this really shiny red colour and it was associated from ancient times with immortality, alchemy and uh, with, with, uh, with the emperor's palace. Many buildings in the imperial palace are dyed with vermilion. So... She's coming from a vermilion chamber. She is a palace woman and she has just bedecked herself. Is she going to meet the emperor? Is she going to have a love tryst? Well, the second line very quickly tells us that. Apparently not. Deep in spring's embrace, this gives us the season. We're in season, which is the time for love, the time for mating. Everything seems to be pushing us until now in the direction of a happy encounter of the woman and the emperor, of the consummation of love as is only appropriate in spring, which is the season of love. And we're deep in spring. It's mid-spring, probably. But, no, there's no meeting. She wanders sadly round the courtyard. Like many abandoned women in these poems, you know, she is lonely. And maybe to pass away the ennui, the boredom, to exteriorize, to take her mind away from the uh, sentimental and sexual frustration, she just walks around the small courtyard that might be attached to the pavilion in which she dwells, trying to entertain herself with the sights of nature in high spring. And she's sad. Uh, probably we wouldn't need this adjective, but it's clearly implied that the lonely palace beauty has to feel sad in spring, and her, her feelings jar contrast in an antithetical parallelism with the joyous love-infused season. Second couplet. So the second couplet zooms in and takes a snapshot. We know the background now. We know we're in the palace. We have a, a beautifully adorned lady. She's wandering around the courtyard. So now we zoom in and we take a snapshot of a moment in which she is there. As she stands among the flowers, counting them, a dragonfly settles on her jade hairpin. So she's there counting the flowers. She's a flower of sorts herself, and she's passing away the time by looking at the flowers and counting them. Flowers that are like her, beautiful but perishable, just as she is not getting any younger. And while she's at this, with a background of flowers surrounding her own physical beauty, so it's natural beauty as accompanying and acting as a resonance box, if you will, for the human beauty of the woman, but also the cultural, artificial, you could say, beauty of her apparel, of her adorning herself. Well, as she's there like a statue, something happens. A dragonfly settles on her jade hairpin. And here, we have a, and here we have again in this beautiful image a synthesis of those three elements of beauty. The beauty of nature in the flowers and in the dragonfly. Uh, the beautiful in nature of the woman, the physical beauty, attractiveness of this young palace lady, which is implied and uh, probably the beauty of her apparel, of her clothes, or here depicted by one element, that jade hairpin on her hair, that piece of jewellery and adornment. So the dragonfly settles on the hairpin, and the dragonfly looks like uh, a natural piece of jewellery. It's shiny and bright in its scales and in its silky wings. So somebody who, who, who looked at the scene might not be able to perceive in the few seconds it lasts that the dragonfly is not a piece of jewellery. In fact, jade hairpins were frequently shaped in the form of, of insects. So you have this juxtaposition of 
during a few seconds, the few seconds that the dragonfly remains settled in the jade hairpin, of natural and cultural artistic beauty, the beauty of the woman, and the beauty of her surroundings in spring. So a lovely picturesque depiction of beauty, but again tinged from the information we have in the first couplet with melancholy, with the sadness of the abandoned beauty languishing in her boudoir. So that's it. It's a nice, well-crafted piece, very pictorial, very visual, a bit conventional, though, we could say.